Hi everyone and welcome back to acrylic painting. Today we are going to be using orange tones and we are going to make our pictures. So to start off for the colors we need, we're going to need our two yellows, our red, white, and black. Um, now, to make mix our paints, we're going to be doing a lot of orange and yellow tones. So we're going to need most of our, our paint, we're going to need lots of our medium yellow and our lemon yellow. So on your plates, you can just go ahead and, or on your um, palettes, you can go ahead and get a nice dot of yellow. of that uh, medium yellow, a little bit of lemon yellow. We don't need a lot of black, but we or of red, but we can get a little bit of red. And that's in the brilliant red and also in crimson. Just a teeny dot of crimson, we won't need very much of that one. And if you want to save your black till the end, you can because that is again one of our last steps. So now I'm going to go ahead and go in with our big brush to start and um, mix our orange. But first, as always, we have to make sure that we have our bumpy side up. And I do. I just have a little fuzzy on my paper. So I'm going to make sure that my paper is nice and clear before we start because we don't want to have anything in, to, anything in that will mix in with our paint. And then we'll come in with our tape. So again, measure your tape out. You're gonna pull it, measure, and rip. And then I'm just going to start with the bottom as usual, making sure to tape that in nice and smooth and flat and push out all the air pockets, making sure we have a nice seal. And then same thing on the top. Push our tape out, make sure we got a good seal and smooth all those ridges. And now we can do our sides. So I really want to take my time and make sure I get the sides down good, the tape, because that will be our border and will make our paper look just a little bit more finished and nice at the end. So really take your time, make sure you have it done good, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, now next step, I'm going to take one of my paint, my palette knives to mix my paint. And I'm going to be mixing red with some of our medium yellow because I want a darker orange at the top. So I'm gonna start with that. So as you can see, I'm starting with my two colors and I just mix them around. So if you notice that it's a little bit too red, you can just add more yellow. Or if it's too light orange, you can add a little bit more red. Personally, I'd, I'd like the color I have here, so I'm gonna stick with that. So then, I'm just gonna center my page. If you have a little stuck out in the corners like I do, that's totally fine. You won't even tell when we rip the tape off. So I'm going to start off with my dark orange and again grabbing that big brush, getting it quite wet. I'm going to go in and get a couple strokes on here. Now for this one we're not going to do it. In our last videos we've had our colors very solid on the top and going all the way down. This time it's going to be a little bit of light and a little bit of dark in, the, in all of the corners. It's not going to be quite as blended. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of picking little spot like little spots of dark and leaving some other spots for light. So now I ran out of dark of uh, that light red, so I'm just gonna put a little bit more on my plate so I can mix my medium 
orange. Then once again, I'm gonna grab my paint scraper and I'm just gonna mix. So once you have your um, colors mixed, you can go ahead and we will put our next color in. So pause this video and mix your light orange. Unpause when you're ready. Now that I have my light orange mixed, I'm gonna grab some of that on my brush, get it a little wet, and then we're just going to mix it in. As you can see, there's not a big difference between my two, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow straight to my page. You can mix it into the palette if you'd like. I'm just gonna add some straight on here. Now remember, when using oranges, we do not want to use white if we can. In our last pictures, we had to use white because it was part of our blending process, and we saw that it turned a little bit pink. So we don't want to use white if you want a, ye a lighter yellow or a lighter orange, you're going to add yellow. We are going to be adding some white, but that's going to be after when this is mainly dried and to the yellow portions. So we're going to try and keep our white and our orange separate because that'll kind of not give us the color that we want. If you need more yellow, um, if you need, if you need lighter orange, just add yellow. And you can see that that's brightening right up. So make sure you have enough dark and light yellow um, red because we're going to need to have some light oranges and some dark oranges. So you have to have your light and your dark, your red and yellow mixed together. Once we get to this point, we're going to add yellow, but pause until you get where you have your oranges and your lights mixed and then you can unpause. I mixed myself a darker orange that I'm going to do up here. It's kind of like a red, got lots of red tones in it. That's okay. And I'm going to go in over here in some of my missing spots and just fill them in with some of my dark colors. See, as we're mixing this, I'm putting a dash of red and a dash of orange in different spots so we can get that different perspective. I'm even going to go in with a, a very dry brush with some crimson red and just mix in some dashes here and there to give us some depth and some perspective. Next we're going to want to get some of our, our lemon yellow and some of our medium yellow on our paper or on our, um, on our palettes. But first, we're going to want to wash this orange out. So you're going to grab your cup and we're going to wash some of that color out because we want a clean yellow that doesn't turn orange. So you're going to need to wash your paintbrush out a little bit and make sure you dry it nice. Now, when you have a nice, clean, mostly dry paintbrush, mine's not fully dry. It's a little teeny bit damp, but that's okay. You're going to go ahead with some of that medium yellow like I have here. And I'm going to start on the bottom and work our way up. So you're going to start with that medium yellow and some of that lighter yellow and just brush it in. And we're kind of doing the same thing that we did with the orange tones. We want different tones of yellow. Now, if you want a little bit of a darker yellow, you can take our yellow orchard, orchard and that will help us get some of those darker tones because we want to have that depth in our picture come through. So I'm going to take, so I take and I dip mine in there and then I'll just dab it off a little to get rid of some of that paint because I don't want it to be, I just want to use a little bit. I don't want it to be so dark and heavy. And you see that it gives it a nice blended appearance on the paper and it's not as wet as the other ones. And now we're going to just continue on with our yellow shades and that um, yellow ochre, that kind of browny yellow tone that we have is really good for mixing, for blending into that orange because it kind of has a little bit of an orange tone to it. It's really good to blend into our orange. So that'll help us get a more of a blended look, but we are still going to want to take some of that orange and blend down like we always do. So going ahead, sweeping from left to right with cross, going up and down and cross strokes 
we are going to we're going to get that blended look that we're that we are looking for and now up on this side I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and just brush it in and then I'm going to make sure my brush is a little bit more dry and I'm going to blend it in because we want to get this sky landscape that we're making we want to have a little bit of light and a little bit of dark in various areas because we're trying to create that depth and that color and like we have in Saskatchewan with our vibrant skies we're trying to recreate that on our paper today so you're gonna need all of those oh, those orange and those reds that you mixed before because you're gonna just keep mixing them in so we started off with the orange and the yellow, and then we're just mixing our different colors into the spots. You can just put them a little bit everywhere. And eventually we are gonna have a full page. So just can keep continue to mix your, your oranges and your yellows. It'll mainly be dark in the top and mainly light at the bottom, but you'll occasionally you'll find a little bit of light up here and a little bit of dark down there. That is perfect. So pause the video and keep blending your colors in and we'll catch up once you're ready and have your page filled in. Once you have your page filled in, as you can see that I've started here, I'm taking a little bit of white, dipping my paintbrush in, and then I'm dabbing off the extra because we want a really dry paintbrush to kind of put some little wispy lines in here um, with our white. So our paint, our paint is kind of dried now. If your white gets a little bit too much, you can just add a little bit of red or orange over top and it'll bring it, it'll mute it out a little bit more. But we're just adding a little bit of white tones in here to get some more of that depth and that perspective. Because the more colors and tones or shades that we have, the more interesting our paper will look. If you run out of orange, you can always mix some more. Like I ran out of orange, so I'm going to mix myself a little bit more see here I'm going to grab my palette knife for mixing and I'm just going to mix myself a little bit more orange just to go over this a bit and see that that's a bit too red, so I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow. Okay, now that we have our paper filled in, we are going to make sure our brushes are washed or in the water, so I'm gonna put this in the water so it doesn't dry out like we always do. And I'm, we're gonna let this dry for a minute or two, so it's not super wet, and we're gonna grab some black and put it on our paper, or on our, um, palettes. I'm going to grab our black and we are going to make, so it's kind of like we're making a field in the bottom or a little bit of meadow with some grass. So we're going to go about, I would say a quarter of the way and you're going to draw a line across for yourself and we're going to color this all in straight solid black. So pause the video and when you have a quarter of your bottom page completely colored in black, unpause and we will keep going. Okay, now that we have our bottom part painted in, we're going to make sure I'm going to put my medium sized brush that I used to fill it in into the water so it doesn't dry out. And I'm going to get myself a little bit more black because I ran out. So we don't, oops. We don't need very much black here. As you can see, I've only got a little dot on the page. I'm gonna take my angled brush and I'm gonna dip it in my black. And now we are gonna make our, we are going to, I'm gonna fill in any spots that I think I missed with the big brush. Just needs a little bit of filling in there and here. And I am going to make our tall grass. So you want your paintbrush to be wet, but not have big globs on it. 
So if my paintbrush if my paintbrush looks like this and it has lots of big globs, I won't get straight lines. So you want your paintbrush to be wet but not have big globs. So this is better. It's not got lots of paint hanging off the sides. And I can make my tall grass. So you can do some starting from the bottom and pulling up, which will give you the most paint at the bottom and littler at the top. Or you can start at the top and go down. I say I switch it up. Do some starting from the top and going down, just to give them a little bit of difference between them. You can do some going straight. Leaning, and you can see that it's starting to get dry, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit more paint, dab off the excess, and I'm going to just touch this one up. That one didn't turn out exactly like I wanted, but hey, that's okay. Now you're just going to add a couple more um, of your grass, so make lots of lines. Make some small, some big, and then unpause the video when you're caught up. Another trick for working with this is taking your angle brush on a side and pulling it down, doing different angles, because that makes the ground not so flat. It makes it a little bit more uneven and gives the illusion of grass in the background. You can do a couple spikes like that, give it a little bit more of this. And that'll help your picture feel a little bit more full and not so flat. So you go ahead and just press and pull down in a circular, in a half circle kind of. Press and pull. So that'll help and then just continue making your grass. So pause and unpause when you're ready. Once your picture is starting to look something like this, we're going to go ahead and add leaves or cattails, whatever kind of uh, thing you want, some extra details to this picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these big leaves and I'm going to go ahead and I want to use a medium brush. I'm going to go for our blue with the orange tip and this one is a little smaller than the angled brush. So I'm going for about this size. You're going to dip it in your black. And then we're going to make some leaves. So I'm going to just on an angle, just kind of start painting on some little lines. And you can use your angled brush for this as well. And I don't do it on all of them, but I just pick a couple that I think could, could use some good leaves or kind of looks like wheat a little bit is what I'm going for. Could do cattails, whatever, you, whatever kind of plants you want to draw or paint and just give it a little bit of detail. That'll just help with our silhouette. So just keep painting a couple of those on and then unpause when you've done a couple. And here's my finished picture after I've added a couple um, leaves and cattails for the cattails. I just took my small paintbrush and just dotted on, just dabbed on. So what I would do is I would just press and make little dots like that until it was a half, until it was a little bit of a cone shape or a half circle. And there we go. So next and final, as always, we're going to take off our tape and reveal the final picture. And there's our final picture. Thanks for painting with me today, and I'll see you guys next time.